Hey everybody, welcome to another video. So this is going to be a little bit different, uh, because it's like the one year anniversary, I kind of want to just go ahead and show off sort of how I do things, more or less. And I figure there's no better way to do that than to show the editing process for my first Scythe 2 video. So, um, here we go. So let's go ahead and, uh, Take a look over here. Also, the uh, my resolution's 1440p, so um, my apologies if it's a little too small on your screen. Hopefully, you'll still be able to kind of get the gist of what's going on here. But anyway, we have our raw footage here. It's going to be this MKV file here. First thing I do is I give it a meaningful name, so because it's Scythe 2, we'll go Scythe 2. It's playing on Ultraviolence, UV, map 01, and it's actually covering map 1 and 2, so we'll go map 01, comma, 02. So we've got the name, and next up, oh god, we're going to see into infinity here. Whee! Alright, so next step is to remux the recording. So, there we go. We're just going to do that one, because the other one's actually this video. Amazing. Shouldn't take too long, it's a pretty short video. Good stuff. And that gives us an MP4 file. And the way I have this set up, I actually have the audio in uh, two tracks. I'll show you that in just a moment. But I'll show you how I do it in OBS real quick. So if we go into the uh, advanced audio settings, advanced audio properties, you'll see that my desktop and system audio are both going to track one. And the uh, mic and auxiliary is going to track two. So that way I can edit both of those audio sources individually without any problems. And over in settings, you do have to set it up in here too. So if we go to output, recording, you can see here, I can't change it. It's kind of hard to see because of the dark theme, but uh, audio tracks one and two are selected. You have to make sure both of those are selected, otherwise it'll only export just one of them. Yeah, kind of wonky. But uh, next step, uh, we're going to go ahead and start up the editor. So let me just move that out of the way. And uh, I have them all kind of down in the line. I use um, Adobe Premiere for the video editing, Adobe Audition for audio, and then Photoshop for all the thumbnails. And then I generally will just just kind of lump it all into Media Encoder. That way I can close Premiere and you know release some several gigabytes of memory. But they're all in a line, so I just kind of click them all just like that. And then just basically, I don't know, walk away and let it all happen. Actually, it's pretty quick, but... Here we go. All right, there we go. Now what I do here is I find this one. This is uh, my solid state drive. This is where the uh, all the recording happens, where it takes place. And then I get this other one here. This is actually my uh, mechanical hard drives. I do have spinning rust in my computer. I have uh, two four terabyte hard drives just kind of on a RAID 1, just that way it's somewhat redundant. And I use this to kind of store data for active projects. So what I do here is I just want to make a folder real quick for the uh, for the MKV file. So Scythe 2 UV. And then we just right click drag and move here. And again, should be pretty quick because it's a uh, fairly small file. And now I want to create a video projects folder. You can actually see the one here for Half-Life 2 Part 2. It's still kind of kicking around there. Now let's go ahead and just make Scythe 2. I always name the same thing that I named the video. So Scythe 2 UV map 01 comma 02. Then inside of here, I create assets, output. And just go ahead and drag the MP4 into assets. I also have some common media stuff. Like if you watch like my Sunlust videos, you'll know that I made pretty heavy use of the Delta Rune and Undertale soundtracks. I also have some just like general sound effects from in here. I don't even know what this was from, but <laughs> anything I need, I pretty much dump into that assets directory. That way it's kind of a self-contained project. So now that we have that all in place, we go back to Premiere, new project. Go ahead and browse. I am using an older version because the... Uh, Oh, jeez. The new file browser they implemented is a crime against humanity, or good taste at the very least. So we have the directory. Double-click it, and Windows helpfully puts the folder name down here. So I just right-click, or not right-click, but Control-C to copy that. Select folder. Paste the name in there. 
hit OK, and that creates the project. Yeah, we we'll just kind of wait for it to do its thing. Now uh, go back here. Uh, it's a little finicky sometimes when you first make the project for some reason. Drag the MP4 in here. Drag it in here to create a new sequence. And because of, you know, OCD and what have you, right-click, delete tracks, and then all empty tracks. Good stuff. So now we have the two audio things. We have the game audio and audio track one, and we have the uh, microphone audio and track two. One of the reasons I like to kind of... Oh, I don't know if that came up in the video, but for some reason the NVIDIA driver likes to just flicker my screens randomly when I first start editing videos. It's fantastic, and I love it. But anyway... I give it about 10 seconds, roughly, before I actually start anything, because I found that sometimes OBS will just kind of not record for a little while. It, it's, it's a good feature. So what I go ahead and do is I kind of just go in here and just sort of scrub through it until I see the Doom melt screen start. Okay, so we cut it there. Delete the first part. Go ahead and drag this back. This is such muscle memory, it actually feels kind of weird narrating over it. And then we uh, want to get to the final Take It Easy. Solo that track. Take it easy. Good stuff. This is also coming through the wrong channel. Give me just a moment. Oh, no, that's just, that's just right. Never mind. My bad. <laughs> Cut there. Delete that. And then I right-click here and apply Default Transition, which is just going to be a fade to black. I probably should... Eh, I don't know. It should be fine. Give me just a moment. That way it kind of reduce microphone bleed a little bit. There we go. All right. So should do take it easy and then fade out. Good stuff. So that's pretty much our base clip. Now, one thing that's kind of a, a bit of an issue here is as it stands right now, the game audio is significantly louder than the uh, microphone audio. So let's just go to kind of a random point here. I'm going to turn this down. That way it doesn't like feed into the mic. So you're going to hear this right away. This is going to sound like absolute trash. Here you go. Let's completely fail that very simple jump. Oh, this bodes well, doesn't it, friends? It does. Okay, now let's go to a part where I'm actually kind of fighting. See, like, I'm actually talking here. You definitely can't really hear it. It's not very clear over the game audio. So we need to take care of that. Now, what I go ahead and do here is right click on this and I wanna split these tracks up so that we can edit them individually. And now we take the track of my voice, edit clip in Adobe Audition, and it'll just export that and automatically load it up. Now I have a little prefi uh, pre prefix, what the hell am I talking about? I have a little preset that I have in favor. It's just YouTube Dynamics Compressor or Compression. However, all that is, is it's literally just a shortcut for, um, I believe it's multiband compressor. Yeah. And it's just the broadcast preset. That's it. That's all there is to it. I didn't do anything special. I'm just literally using something that was available right out of the box. But we'll just go ahead and just select all and then YouTube dynamics compression. Takes a few seconds. Go ahead and save. This is one of the reasons I edit on a solid state drive too, because some of this stuff's a little bit IO heavy. And we go ahead and close that with control W. We don't really need this anymore, so I'm just gonna close it. And now you see that the peaks have been updated in Premiere. So now the uh, the audio for my voice is much hotter, which means it's going to just clip like crazy if I just export it as is. So now what we have to do is we go into the audio editor pane of Premiere Pro. And what we want to do is we want to duck the audio for the game. So essentially reduce the volume in general and then just duck it further when I start speaking. Fortunately, this is an automated process. So what we do is we make sure that my voice track is selected here. We click dialog. Don't need to do anything special here. Now we click this track here. Click ambiance. And over here in presets, we select gameplay, which is a preset that I created. We want to have it essentially duck against uh, dialog clips, which is what we flagged this one as. Sensitivity is set to 6, which feels about right. Duck amount is going to be negative 8 decibels. Fade is going to be 500 milliseconds. Fade is essentially how long before and after 
the, uh, I guess, talking parts stop. Okay, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Sorry. Essentially, that means that 500 milliseconds before when I start talking and after I stop talking, the game audio is going to remain ducked. And in the clip volume, we want to set the base level to negative 12 decibels. That'll keep the game audio comfortably low. That way you don't get these really peaky, uh, like loudness spikes whenever I stop speaking for a few seconds. So with that all in place, we're going to gener generate keyframes. It's kind of a... You pretty much just know it's done because the button becomes clickable again and you see a whole bunch of parameter keyframes appear here. And now when we go back into editing... Let's go ahead and just, we'll go to where I'm fighting the skeletons in the second one, I guess. Uh, not those skeletons. No, nah, how about this? This this will work. So now if I start playing this clip, you'll be able to hear the difference like right away. All these are going to open. There's probably going to be some bad guys. Well, got some uh, tub lords. Some, well, fat imps. And we got some imp imps. Well... Go ahead and deal with these. There you go. So you can hear the game audio is much lower. Uh, my voice kind of cuts through basically everything. And uh, yeah, whenever I stop talking, like if I stop talking for a few seconds, it would just kind of bring the game audio up a little bit, but not too much. And um, really, that's about it. So we just save the project. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control M. And that brings up the export window. And I have a preset for uh, YouTube at 1440p60, which is essentially going to be just 60fps, uh, which clip's already set to that. VBR one pass at 35 megabits bitrate. That's pretty much it. And where I store this, like I'll go into Video Projects, Scythe 2, Output, put it in here. So we do that, we hit Q, that'll send it into Media Encoder. Now, I just want to make sure, okay, format, H.264, preset, YouTube, 1440p, 60. I always want to make sure of that because sometimes it'll just randomly default to um, match source high bit rate, which uh, is noticeably lower quality. And uh, that actually happened to me on the Half-Life 2 uh, Part 2 video where it just went back to that, and I ended up having to re-upload the video and all that shit. It's just really annoying. And with all that in place, like, usually if I have other videos on deck, and I usually do, like, I'll have a couple D-zones and stuff like that, and I'll just render them all at once. But we're only doing this one for now, so we'll just hit the play button, and uh, it'll go ahead and start. So, roughly five minutes. It seems like it's about, on my computer, about, like, three and a half times real time, roughly. So let's just go ahead and close out of this. Now the thing we want to do is make a very catchy, totally good looking thumbnail for this thing. You can already see that just the absolute masterpieces that I have over here. They're so great, especially my airboat. That's my favorite. So what I always do when I'm starting a project, okay, so first of all, we have is this one. There we go. We have a thumbnails directory. So scythe two blah, 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 blah UV. There we go. I can totally type. So I usually have two parts to this. I'll have the actual like template, which after I establish that for one of them, I mean I can just go ahead and use that for all of them. And then I include a screenshot. The way that I get the screenshot, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to uh, my other desktop. This is the one I use for my fancy Doom stuff. And I have all my various project tabs up here, and then one that I use for just casual play. So screenshot, I already ended up putting this in, just because I like to be prepared, but I always have I have a ZDoom, or a GZ Doom install specifically set up for screenshots. So when I start this up, I already have like an auto auto exe C dot config. You probably didn't see it because it took OBS a little while to lock to uh, lock onto this. But you see in the console, it has uh, God Mode, uh, No Target, No Clipping 2 on. So as you can see, this little guy can't see me, and I can fly. Ooh, how exciting. So then what I do is I just kind of go through and, I don't know, I find a nifty area. Kind of like this little thing here. So a lot of times I'll try to just, you know, 
narrow it up like that, center view. In this case though, I think I wanna go above, tilt down a little bit. And uh, maybe a little higher. So there we go. And also keep in mind that the uh, right side of the thumbnail is where YouTube tends to put all of its junk. So um, we wanna put this to the right, the thing that we wanna focus on kind of on the right, and then we want the text to go on the left. So I have F12 bound up to screenshot. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Go ahead and quit. Jump back over here. And now this is a new project. So we're gonna go ahead and just open up Slade and we wanna extract some graphics. Oh, look, my fancy little Doom projects. And the lovely little way that I have my Doom folder set up, which actually works surprisingly well for me. So let's go ahead and open up Scythe 2. Now, generally what I'll do is I'll extract a few things, and then that way if something doesn't work out, I don't have to keep jumping back in. So what we typically want is M Doom, because that's usually what appears above the uh, title screen. Hmm. So let's just let's just do a quick search for it. Ah, uh, it doesn't have one. That is unfortunate. Now there are a few other options. I'm reasonably familiar with Photoshop, so I can usually hack something together. Uh yeah, this one might actually be a little bit trickier than most. Oh, a for Afrit. A for it, whatever the hell it's called. However you say that thing. Yeah, these are all just textures, so... Uh, yeah, we might just have to uh, go ahead and improvise. It's kind of what I'm feeling here. All right, well, I guess we're going to go ahead and do that then. So let's see. Title pick. That has the logo. We could work with this. So we're gonna go ahead and export that to PNG. And we wanna put it in the main thumbnails directory. There we go. Okay, well this is gonna be like, I don't know, intermediate level Photoshopping, I suppose. Usually I can just kind of paste something over it, but uh, oh God, you can see the gradient that I used for that airboat thing. Oh, it's so cursed. So yeah. First thing I want to do is uh, actually go ahead and, I guess just go ahead and extract that, no, not there. Well, you know what, what the hell, while we're here, this is the screenshot that I took. So Scythe UV map 0102 screenshot. Uh, and down here, I'm gonna go ahead and just save this real quick. That way it has a file name and then I could just control S like a madman because that's just how I roll. O2 dash thumbnail. Good stuff. Now, next step is going to be getting that scythe logo out of titlepick.ping. All right, so this is gonna be great. Actually, it's probably not gonna be too bad the anti-aliasing does not help matters, but uh, if we can just grab, yep, contiguous. Want the tolerance to be maybe a little higher. Let's go with about 128. I don't really, oh, damn it. I don't really care about the white outline too much because with that, I can always just add that in with a, just a stroke on the layer. So we just wanna grab the text. I could also figure out what font it's using, but uh, eh, whatever, we're halfway here. Now let's go ahead and paste that in there. Definitely going to need to ramp up the size of that a little bit. Cause keep in mind, this is a 720p image, but yeah, it's you're never gonna see it at that resolution. So let's see, we probably want about maybe 500% roughly. Ah, damn it. We also want this to be set to nearest neighbor because pixelation is fun. Blur is not. So I think I kinda, normally I establish the template and then worry about the uh, background, but because this has that white background, I think I wanna, or the 
sorry, the white outline. I think I want to do it the opposite way. So let's go ahead and take that screenshot, bring it in here, just copy and paste it into here. Lower the size. I usually, what I'll usually do is bring it down to about 720p and then just kind of adjust it and move it to kind of where I want it. So let's go with, I don't know, right about there. That should be good. Merge that to the background layer. And then because I want to, I do want to put a layer effect on here. I do want to convert this to an actual layer. I'm going to keep the background name though. And now we have Scythe. You can see that incredible job we did with the anti-aliasing. However, it's not a huge deal because I think when we add in the stroke, it should be okay. So let's bring that out to about, oh, we want that to be outside. Change the color to white. Mm. That looks kind of bad. Let's double check this again. I don't know, really, that is that is kind of how it looks. We are missing like the stem on the E. I should have noticed that earlier. So let's go ahead and just eliminate that for now. Yeah, this is gonna be a little tricky. Let's go ahead and set the tolerance a little bit higher. I and mean, we can't afford to be a tiny bit sloppy because, yeah, not that high. Let's do 160. Set anti-alias on. That might, mm. We are probably gonna have to do a little bit of manual. Oof. Gotta be really careful. If we pick anything that's like more than just like black, that's gonna happen. Ah, balls. Of course I couldn't pick one that had a very easy to extract logo, could I? So I think what might be hurting us more than anything else is that anti-aliasing setting. Let's see if we can make this work. Uh, I'm not a super... I mean, if this wasn't immediately obvious, I'm not like this wunderkind when it comes to Photoshop. I'm kind of like 100% self-taught. <laughs> if that wasn't obvious, based on my thumbnails, yeah, let's just go ahead and just trace this. Why not? I think I'll go ahead and speed this video up because this could be painful. Okay, there we go. Maybe. I don't know. There's some parts that are a little rough, but we might be able to kind of smooth them out with a little bit of uh, layer effects. So let's, uh, oh, missed a few bits there. I don't know. You'll see. You'll see. Let's give this another shot, shall we? So let's go ahead and paste this here. Uh, 500%. So there we go. We've got a bit more of the logo now. However, we also have a little bit of uh, fuzz around the edge. So here's one way of, that I found that we can deal with that. So what we want to do is we want to do an inner glow. Uh, let's go ahead and bring that to normal. Fully opaque. And what that did was essentially more or less just uh, kind of smoothed out some of the inner parts that were a little, little bit not right, I guess. So let's go ahead and bring that down. Yeah, I think that's about probably as good as it's going to get. Now we'll add the stroke. There's one thing. It does not have to be absolutely perfect. I'm actually starting to think that the uh, pixelation in this case isn't really going to work out in our favor. But anyway, we've got that. Now we do have a little bit more cleanup to do, so let's go ahead and go ahead and do our abraser brush. We want pencil. Let's kind of clean up these edges a tiny bit. That way you don't get any of this like I guess overstroke would be a good way to put it. So 
So let's kind of bring these. Whoa, hello. <laughs> Like I said, I don't think I could have possibly picked a uh, worse wad in terms of, like, clean logos. I don't know. I wonder if I can maybe just find the font that this is based on, because I don't think this is going to look good. Yeah, because normally, like, if, if we take a look at, like... Oh, I don't know. Um, like DV2, for instance. Yeah, you can just basically go M Doom and take that. <laughs> Not going to work here. So let's see. Give me just a moment. Let me do a qu little bit of quick web searching, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So I was able to find the uh, font that Scythe 2 uses. So uh, let's go ahead and use our text tool here. And the font is called Abaddon. So look at that. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of line this up here and uh, try to get roughly the same size as that. So probably about 224 point, roughly. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and leave the uh, failed attempts in because you know what? Sometimes things really just don't work out the way you'd expect. And probably good to see that too. So the uh, spacing is a bit off uh so let's go ahead and just jump in here oops not that one and what we want to do is uh well first off let's left justify that and we want to increase the letter spacing just a touch which i think is this one here yeah there we go and look at that. That is a pretty close match. I'll put the size a tiny bit more. And there we go. That is close enough to perfect that I think I'm okay with it. So let's go ahead and just make that black. Let's go ahead and delete this failed experiment. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just give this a white stroke outline. I want that to be a little bit thicker. Let's go with about, that should work, about 10. I think that'll be fine. Do you want that to be on the outside with 100% opacity? And uh, there we go. That's gonna be the basis of our thumbnail. So next up, we're gonna wanna put the map names down here. Let me go ahead and just put map 01 through 02. And for, uh, all of my thumbnails, I actually use um, Myriad Pro. And this was set to about 212 points. And I generally like to use, like, I don't know, Bold Condensed looks pretty good. Now we want to set these uh, this back to zero. Perfect. Going to bump this into the corner. We want it to be roughly aligned with the logo. It's actually... Go ahead and bump this over just a little bit. I usually like to kind of go to the edge here and then bring it out about 16 pixels on either side, just like that. Bring this out, line it up, and yeah, right about there. So let's go ahead and just give this a similar outline. I like to try to keep, well, <laughs> nowadays I try to like, I try to keep the, uh, map numbers with a similar theme as the actual map name before I would just use like this walking gradient hue it was uh, or sometimes even completely random like in the case of scythe it was uh, it was so cringe now that doesn't really look right to me so let's go ahead and just play with the uh hold on a second why is it Not really too, I'm not really sure if I'm crazy about the whole, about that whole look. Let's kind of play with it a little bit. So what other colors were on the title pick? So we've got, I don't know, we kind of got this nice gnarly red in the background with this kind of an orangish type of color. So let's see, let's bring that out here. That way we can kind of pick from it. Let's go ahead and highlight this. Now let's go ahead and 
Let's try out this orange here. See how that looks. Uh, maybe a little too much like uh, Half-Life. I like to try to keep them somewhat visually distinct. Let's go ahead and take that red. Let's lighten it up just a little bit. And we're going to make the outline black. Uh, it's, it's a little better. I think it kind of blends in a little too much with the lava, though. <laughs> uh, I've seen worse. I, I've made worse. Hmm. All right, I think we might need to focus on the text color a little bit. Let's actually bring this back to white. And we'll just go ahead and use something that I've been doing a lot more in recent times. Let's go ahead and give this a gradient overlay. Set the angle to 90. There we go. Set that to default. And uh, I guess let's go ahead and just play around with this a little bit. All right, okay. Uh, mm, you know, I don't hate the way that looks. Let's play around with it a little bit. Let's go ahead and do something maybe a little more like that. Okay, all right. That's not terrible. And maybe give it a little bit of an emboss. Uh, I don't know. Oh my goodness, I just made an Eli Vance noise there. <laughs> uh, please, no. Eh, I don't know. That's really, it would be really hard to see in the actual thumbnail. Although, I don't know. I like the, uh, hmm. I kind of like the bevel part. I don't like the, uh, I don't know. Hold on. Let's play with this a little bit. It's kind of just the thing. I, I I don't really go into this with a firm plan. Let's just kind of tweak these values a little bit. Just have some fun with it. You know, we're not we're not taking this super seriously. And I think for the shadow, we want to actually let's go ahead and set that to zero opacity. And soften this a little bit. Hmm. We're almost there, I think. Let's give it a little bit more depth. Let's make that a... Uh... Okay. Raise the... No, lower the angle. No, that's... All right, let me think, let me think. Size. Soften a little more. It's kind of getting that nice highlight look that I'm... There we go. There we go. I kind of like that. Again, like I said, there's no... <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason to it. And there's also, like, this whole thing. The, the spacing with this hyphen is really odd. So let's go ahead and add a space and do the most jank thing we possibly can. We're just going to make this smaller. Because really... In this case, the thing that matters most is the end result. That looks reasonably good. Let's go ahead and make the stroke a little bit thicker on this one. We'll bring that up to... Ooh, not that one. Not that one. We'll go ahead and bring that up to 16. Okay. Let's go ahead and move both of these away from the edge a tiny bit more. That looks pretty acceptable. And then what I generally do is I'll bring this down to about... Yeah, 16.67. And you can see the title text clearly. You can see the map text clearly. Background, we're going to have to move that a little bit. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, I'm going to have to repaste that. Give me a moment. And the thing is, it's important to establish kind of a template for this because after you do that, subsequent maps become much simpler because all I basically do at this point is I just swap in the new graphics, change the map number, and that's it. You have an efficient process. You can do it in a couple seconds. There we go. We got the same effect, except the uh, this little spire part here is actually kind of visible behind the logo. Now let's go ahead and, because that is going to be pretty dark, go ahead and bump the brightness up a little bit, a little more contrast. 
doesn't have to be perfect. You can blow out the highlights a little bit. I don't know. I like to avoid it. It doesn't look like I'm doing it here. I think we should be good. Let's bump that back down to 16.67. Yeah, you know what? I think I can live with that. So let's go ahead and save that. I also have a little uh, shortcut to uh, this little function here. Quick, quick export as ping. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Make sure it's set to the right directory and save. And we also have our video completely rendered at this point. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Hot Start. Welcome to Scythe 2. So yeah, I decided to start this new thing. Uh, yeah, because uh, it is the one year anniversary from when I uploaded my Scythe 1 video. So yeah, there we go. That's basically my process in a nutshell. And pretty much the, the next step here is just to upload it all to the YouTubes and uh, then just sit in a corner and cry. Okay, maybe not that last one. That's more for if I'm playing like Deus Walt and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, you get the idea. But anyway, I hope you found this informative. A uh, little bit of a departure from, obviously, from a Doom video. Imagine that. But uh, yeah, and if you have any comments on how to possibly improve the process, or uh, I don't know, if you even have any questions about making videos yourself, I don't know, I'm not really an expert, but I think I figured things, things out fairly nicely. I have an efficient process at the very least. So um, yeah, just let me know. Leave a comment. All that good stuff. And uh, hope you all have a fantastic day. And as I always say, take it easy.